Foolish Mortals, what's up? Lightbulb Joe here. Today we're going to discuss Volume 2 of the Tales from the Haunted Mansion book series. Um, this one is Ma Midnight at Madame Leota's. Tales from the Haunted Mansion, Volume 2, Midnight at Madame Leota's. Transcribed, narrated by Amicus Arcane, the Haunted Mansion's resident librarian that he is. So this story, recapping, the first story was about uh, the fearsome force, right? Four middle school kids who died in one way or another and wound up in the Haunted Mansion. Okay. Now, there's 999 happy haunts within the Haunted Mansion. So we meet, uh, not meet, but referenced Phineas, Ezra, and Gus, or Hitchhiking Ghosts, in the first one. They're referenced in this one as well. The Eternal Grey Cemetery is attached to the Haunted Mansion, which is in uh, New Orleans Square. So... You have the caretaker with his bloodhounds. We meet, in this particular book, um, we meet the hatbox ghost at some point, and we find out whose head is in the hatbox itself. It is a banker's head, um, which was decapitated by a zombie, Uncle Rory, if you will. So the main, the main story of this is uh, there's this character, William. He's going to visit his sister's grave at the Eternal Grace Cemetery to wish her a happy birthday. He's so devastated that he, he feels guilty that she's dead because he made a wish when he was a kid that, you know, she would disappear and she then died. So he's had this guilt ever since and it's been years since she's dead and etc. But he's seen a bunch of different psychics. He's seen a bunch of different mediums and he knows Madame Leota is the best of the best, but she's dead, but she's still around kind of a thing. So he winds up at his sister's grave. Um, Amicus Arcane meets him by the gravesite, coerces him into the mansion, into the haunted mansion, into the library, makes him listen to, you know, stories, as he always does. You, you, we have this girl Connie dying at a, a carnival. We have Uncle Rory becoming a zombie and decapitating a banker whose head then is in the hatbox ghosts. Hat box. We have um, this old movie star from 1939, and I can't remember her name in the book, um, but she was friends with Uncle Rory within this particular thing. Uncle Rory is just, you know, this, this main character's uncle, basically. We have a story involving the vampire who's in one of the portraits in the Haunted Mansion, how he came about, why he's in the Haunted Mansion, how he is a shapeshifter, so he's a bat, he's a wolf. So anytime he's a wolf, he's like outside the haunted mansion because no pets allowed. And then we have um, the last girl, man. What was her name? I can't remember. There's a lot of there's a lot of characters in this book, and they don't all have actual reference to each other. Camille. Okay, Connie was the girl who died in the carnival. Uncle Rory is the guy who became a zombie who killed the banker. Uh, Diana Derwin. She is the Hollywood starlet from 1939 who then passed away as well and of course Camille. Camille is a girl who was attacked by roaches and died at this manor. Not actually mentioned where the manor is in reference to the haunted mansion itself but I'm assuming it's close by because how else would she have gotten there you know? So eventually after Watching films in the attic and being chased by Constance, the murderous bride. We get to meet Constance, the murderous bride, who resides in the attic at the Haunted Mansion, right? We know that from the ride. We know that from the lore that we were given, you know, these all these 50 years. 50 years! Long time. And so, William eventually listens to all the stories, watches all the movies, and then he gets to Madame Leota. And uh, Leota ex uh, demands, like, a... Not a gift, but like, what's the personal belonging of the spirit he's trying to reach? His sister. So he pulls out a bracelet having a charm of a rabbit, a parrot, a guinea pig, and a fish. And you're like, oh, damn, that's Willa. That's Willa's bracelet. Willa is one of the fearsome foursome who we meet in the first book. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is her brother, Billy. But he's going by William. And then... You have two of the fearsome forces like fighting over the bracelet and then they all go to the ballroom to celebrate Willa's birthday because that's why William is at the gravesite to wish his sister a happy birthday. So we're in the ballroom and like all the ghosts are dancing and like there's just like you see in the ride, you know, 
the grand old party of the translucent ghosts. Willa's hanging about 10 feet in the air, and there's the birthday cake, and like, Willa confronts Billy, Billy confronts Willa, and he says he's sorry, and she laughs, because her death has nothing to do with him. Um, so then he's kind of at peace on that, and he knows that, you know, she's where she's supposed to be, you know, everyone, it's a happy haunt, it's not a, you know, miserable kind of a thing. So, he winds up closing his eyes in, like, happiness, and then wakes up, quote-unquote, at the foot of um, the granite angel sculpture at Willis' grave. And the caretaker and his bloodhound are like, you know, did you sleep her all night? He's like, I guess so. And then he's frantically looking for the bracelet. <clears throat> but it turns out for the bracelet was now carved into the wrist of the angel statue. But it, it's cute. It's it, Nice little twists. So then he had, goes off and has coffee with the caretaker. This is really cool because I did not expect this level of twists and turns. And you're, you're, you're reading this and you're the first the first story about the carnival was creepy and then the second story about the vampire is creepy and you're like, okay, where's this going? And then like you meet the, the murderous bride and then you're watching the videos, not videos, you're watching the movies on the, on the you know, film reels about the zombie attacking the the banker and the head gets in the hat box ghost's box and you're like all right this is neat and then you got camille with the cockroaches and you're like but what's the point of all this like the point was to have billy understand that this stuff was real this stuff happened like this is why these ghosts are here this is this is why these ghosts are haunted you know it's not all magic as billy has you know studied all these years this is actually this is a thing um so because he realizes that at the stroke of midnight, he's running around the, the I was going to say the hotel, he's running around the mansion saying, I believe, I believe. And then that's when he actually gets to Madame Leota. So it's a matter of not breaking him, but making him understand this is reality. This is how it is. And it's not 12 gongs, it's 13 gongs. Because the, as we all know, the grandfather clock in the hotel mansion, in the hotel mansion, oh my God. The grandfather clock in the haunted mansion has 13 numbers, not 12. So it's 13 gongs at midnight, not 12 gongs at midnight. Whoa, uh, 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 spooky. Hashtag too spooky for me. Too spooky for me. I don't know what, I don't know a good gesture for spooky. Any of my sign language friends out there, um, anyone know of any sign language friends what is the sign for spooky is it this i'm hoping it's that that would be fun but yeah tales from the haunted mansion volume two midnight at madame leota's it's right in the title as soon as it struck midnight he believed and he got to see madame leota do you believe you should believe because that's what this is all about ghosts are haunting whether they're haunting your house, whether they're haunting your friends, whether they're haunting your family, whether they're haunting at the happiest haunt on earth, the haunted mansion. Ruchimalo. <laughs>